Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logical Nonsense Podcast. Today we have Adam Spencer on. He is a sports agent. Super excited to have him on today. We're going to go over kind of the whole realm of sports agency. Not many people know about this realm and just kind of go in depth, pick his brain a little bit. Adam, how are we doing today? Hey, I'm good, brother. I'm good. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Well, let's get introductions out of the way. Adam, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody um, and kind of your background? Uh, Adam Spencer, uh, owner, CEO of Spencer Group International. We're a sports and talent uh, management agency. We do uh, consulting also with uh, sports businesses and uh, businesses that want to be involved with sports, i.e. rights holders. Um, based out of Seattle, uh, we've been in this now for over five years now, uh, technically, uh, and, um, originally from Gloucester County, Virginia. Um, no one knows where that is until I tell you about it. <laughs> um, if you remember, if you remember Revolutionary War, they tell you Cornwallis tries to go north from yeah. Yorktown and they show you a picture of Yorktown and they point north. Well, the place that they're pointing to across the water north is my hometown. Oh, that's that's super cool. Super cool tidbit. I like that. Yeah. Uh, graduate of Gloucester High School, um, former and current Hampton University student. Um, oh, nice. Spent 20 years in the military, and um, here we are. Well, awesome. We're excited to have you on today. Um, as I mentioned before, you are a sports agent. That's what's inspired me about you um, because this is a big sports channel here. We talk a lot, you know, go mm -hmm. in depth on players and all that. So kind of let's start out with what inspired you to get into sports agency. So, um, like I said, I spent 20 years in the military. There, there used to be a saying, especially when I was a much younger man and a much younger soldier, what do you want to do when you grow up? In other words, yeah. what do you do when you leave? And so uh, that moment began to hit me in 2012 in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. light kind of dawned on me. At, at the time, it was, hey, I can't keep doing these these uh, deployments. Uh, yeah. Really, uh, the light was dawned on me. Hey, is the body, mind, and, you know, everything else prepared for another 10 or 12 years of this. I had six years left because I, I was already indefinite. And uh, it hit me there. And we we got back home uh, June, I believe that was, of 2012. I was stationed down the road here at Fort Lewis. Well, now JBLM really uh, stayed with me. That, you know, the thought process or that question stayed with me. So I, be, you know, got to a place where I began to answer it. And, you know, one of those things was, well, what do you like to do? That weirdly, uh, because of where I was stationed at, as far as locale in Afghanistan and the uh, site I was on, um, I actually got to intermingle with a lot of folks from a lot of different countries. And, you know, that kind of interaction uh, stimulated me to say the least. Mm -hmm. um, so it was that. And, okay, I like sports. Okay, well, here yeah, we are. Here you are. Uh, my original time at Hampton University was studying sports, was wanting to get into sports journalism. So, uh, here we are. Well, what did that process look like for you to like get into sports agency? How did you go about that? Did you just one day decide that you were going to start like an LLC or who did you go to or what steps did you take? I guess. So, um, I took some uh, courses and did some training and, you know, did some agent advisement with uh, sports management worldwide. It's uh, right there by you in Portland. Uh, started doing that in 2015. Uh, I've taken uh, classes with uh, Jen Mueller, if you know who she is from Mariners mm -hmm. Games, uh, the media classes, uh, and a couple of, uh, uh, listen to Joel Corey, NFL agent, um, Dr. Lynn Lashbrook, NFL agent. I think he does a few other things. So I've had some experiences with them. And, you know, as I said, took the courses. And by uh, 
2016, I had found out about the fever test. So I uh, still was stationed in Germany with about, with a little under a year and some change left. And, you know, this was the time to make the, coming up on the time to make the decision on, okay, am I going to stay long or am I going to retire? What am I going yeah. to do with life? Yeah. And so the opportunity came up to uh, FIBA, International Basketball Agency test. Uh, flew back here, uh, went down to Miami, passed the test. And so uh, next month, got in, well, about a month, month or so later, got into soccer. And we've been on the way ever since. Uh, and retired, came back here in 2018, you know. They're going full steam ahead. We we're legitimate now. We got an LLC, so uh, yeah, here we are. That's awesome. That's awesome. Super cool journey. Um, what kind of athletes are you representing right now? What are some of the most notable names slash businesses that you're you're representing currently? So um, I really don't talk about the athletes much. Um, Went through a lot of changes during the pan during the pandemic and post pandemic. Uh, so we've got a couple of guys training right now to go to Europe on trial. So we'll let them do their thing, hope for the best for them, and go from there with them. Um, we uh, also partner with uh, MEI out of London, Major Events International. So uh, we get uh, this summer. I was supposed to do it last summer, but some things came up. This summer I'll be in Lausanne at the um, IOC as uh they meet in prep for uh paris 2024 uh you know we'll do the hobnobbing and networking the social stuff there so that's uh obviously something i'm looking forward to and you know we've got contacts with all it, uh all the mls teams we've uh, got some paperwork to finish up with the uh, federation but you know we've already done all the contacts with the mls teams had those for years so yeah yeah. What is like some of your day to day activities look like as a as your job, I guess? Um, so obviously I'm uh, sitting in front of this damn thing in front of emails all day. <laughs> yeah. Part of it, too, is paying attention to what's going on in the sports world. So that's, you know, obviously something like Sports Center, keeping up on what's going on. Um, some of the different shows, because um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember it, but there used to be the show where uh michael wilbar kind of got famous yep. jamel hill kind of got famous uh the sports reporters yeah that used sports to come on so yep. that was something that always inspired me i loved that show so um you know it's reading about what's going on in the industry every day um the two guys that i do have that are working on trial and stuff is staying in contact with them hey what's going on you know how you feeling you know um uh, it's different uh, webinars during the day. Um, that was something that was really good to me as far as the pandemic went because everybody was at home and you couldn't go to these different conventions or training. Mm -hmm. So everything was online. So I learned so much more in that basically two, two and a half year period than yeah. any time in the five, five, six years. Yeah, I've been doing this. So, well, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's super cool that you're able to absorb during that time period because a lot of people definitely didn't take advantage of that. So, yeah. um, getting into an interesting topic within sports right now, how has NIL changed the world of your field and sports agency? <laughs> well, first, I will say NIL is something that should have been there all along. Yeah. And, and honest, actually real quick, before you go into your answer, I do want, not everyone understands NIL. Um, and so NIL is basically giving athletes, um, the right to sell their name, image, and likeness, um, to businesses or companies if they so choose to partner with them. Yeah, uh, for all intents and purposes, yeah, your name, image, and likeness. Um, I, you can be Caleb Williams now and being a Dr. Pepper. Yep. The thing that we you, we also it's important to mention within that is that the status the status of amateur. Yep. 
if you will, um, which was you're talking about the, um, college athletes and, you know, depending on the state you live in, high school athletes. So mm-hmm. if you're still in a quote unquote amateur, if your sport is still in a quote unquote amateur state yeah. or the level you perform on is still in an amateur state. Um, if you're in college, obviously you have an opportunity there to make a, uh, basically make a living off of, you know, your name, image, and license, uh, likeness, or, you know, be a part of whatever collective your school has put together. Like I said, it should, it should have been there all along. It's changed a lot of what has gone on because now I can sign you to an NIL deal and, you know, you go through your Instagram, all business contacts, so-and-so agency or so-and-so's email. You know, yeah, you know, Twitter. I have been noticing that a lot more. Yeah, for for business contracts, for for business uh, contact email, so and so. Now you know, still, I I couldn't represent them in, let's say, the NBA or the NFL, wherever they go. But it is now the ground. It's now ground zero as far as the agent. If you can get him him or her to do an NIL deal with you, you've begun to build a relationship. Yeah. That's interesting. To carry, to carry through the career. Well, so obviously that's, uh, it, like I said, it's a grounding point and it's, um, you know, setting the standard of where now you've got to meet the kid at, you know, you've got agents now at the AAU tournaments mm-hmm. right along with the scouts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's becoming a uh, an occupation where you have to attach to that young person at such a very young age. And, you know, there's a lot of different things going on. They may have a lot of different things going on. There's different family dynamics, all of that. Yeah. Do you um, feel like with getting these kids so much younger, are you almost making a business deal with the family just as much as you are with the athlete? Well, no matter the age you get them, you, you bring in that client, if you will, you're making a business deal with not only him or her, but you're making a business deal with whoever's in the inner circle, you know, however they're dealing with mom and dad or whatever that family dynamic looks like. You're making a deal with nowadays the trainer, and whoever else is around them. And I, I tell people all the time to, if you want to look at something, go back to the last dance. Mm-hmm. Look at how many people were attached on a financial basis, not with, without the last name Jordan to Michael. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to that. That'll, that. that'll tell you a lot. I like that. Yeah, no, it's interesting because, you know, I think there it's definitely been a debate on whether it's a good thing or not. Um, and so I, you mentioned you think it's always should have been in place. Why do you think that? Well, there's a social, a legal, and a financial uh, conversation, three different conversations. That yeah, I yeah. So pick one. Which one you want first? I guess more of the social, I guess. like from, Okay. Yeah. Let's, go, let's start there. Let's start with the social. So... F- from a social perspective, we have to be very honest. We let's get out of trying to cancel somebody or trying to call some, call somebody woke and worrying. Um, we need to first and foremost stop telling the lie of how sports and politics don't cross. We need to stop that. Yeah. When you look at at the college level or at the high school level, the sports where money is being driven to support the school. Mm-hmm. That's high school, that's middle school, high school, college, you know, academy, junior college, whatever you want to call it. You look at the sports that are driving those, that is driving that type of revenue, they're, depending on the sport, at least 65 to 75% black. Mm-hmm. May or may not be female, mm-hmm. may or may not be a member of the LGBTQ plus mm-hmm. community. Yeah. There's your social aspect. So you're telling those folks, the ones that are making the money, 
let's just say we got rid of it. So you're telling those folks, okay, take your little education and go on about your business while we've let Zuckerberg and whoever else go to college for however long they went, quit and go be a millionaire. You know, yeah. we we've got guys who doing what you do, no training whatsoever, but got a microphone and a camera. Yeah, you know, whatever shtick they had, they did it and went forward. Now they're millionaires. But we're telling said athlete, okay, sign on this dotted line and go make this money for at the college level, said school. Or from that, yeah, go play high school football, which is a financial driver for the high school. Um, other sports attach off of it. Other organizations will go out there and uh, do their little fundraisers during the game or sell themselves or tell the community about themselves during the game. But you, athlete, stay away from the money. Mm-hmm. If you look at it and, you know, we ever had an honest conversation about the NCAA, 90% of the scandals, that 95% of the scandals that they have, they went out, they went after it because they found out about money. Yeah. While, you know, we've got uh, the the Larry Nassar situation at Michigan State, uh, the Joe Paterno situation surrounding the coach staff at Penn State all those years ago. We, you know, nobody knew nothing, but we knew where the money was. There's a message in that. Yeah. Um, you look at the legal side now. Now, um, look at the kid, um, Raekwon, I believe his name is Green, playing at West Virginia. Okay. Now, uh, and this is where the transfer portal gets involved. Um, yeah. Look at uh, Tez Washington, Tez Whitaker. Just got done with the season at University of North Carolina playing football. You know, they were in the situations where they needed waivers for the transfer portal because I think they wanted tr- third transfer or something of that general nature. Uh, part of the reasonings or the grievances filed were for mental health or family situations. And so the legal side of it now, you're hearing right to work laws. So you're telling me this is a job. If you're adding right to work, I, I ain't Johnny Cochran, so please don't come at me with all the legal questions. <laughs> yeah. But if you're putting right to work, if you're using a legal, if legal stance of right to work is being used, I don't care where your politics are. If this Supreme Court is saying you've been taking money from these young people for Umpteen hundreds, um, umpteen years, 50, 60 years now. Yeah. Then, from a legal perspective, they're saying college athletics is a job. Yeah. So they should be paid if they're in a job, is what you're getting to. Yeah. Yeah. We're here. And now, you know, from a, a, a third perspective, you're looking at it with NIL now. For years, you had somebody like a Dabo Sweeney, and you look at these schools, majority the majority of them aren't like UW, smack dab in the northern part of Seattle, or like the University of Miami, smack dab in the middle of Miami. Um, On a smaller, to a smaller degree, you look at uh, University of Houston. Um, mm-hmm. Rice University, Texas Southern, uh, SMU, you know, those right in the middle of the city of Houston, right in the middle of Dallas. Yeah. Most of these schools are in very rural areas. So the head coach, especially the head football coach, who, if you look at state financial records, nine times is generally the highest paid person on the state federal, on the state payroll. Yeah. So there's that. There's that also. You've got a head football coach that's the highest paid person on the on the state federal payroll. Why is that? Because they're bringing in money. Exactly, the football team is bringing in money. Yep. So what has happened in in years gone by is they basically own and it's, like I said, there's small they're these very small, very rural towns that most of these colleges are set in. They own those towns. Well, now yeah. with NIL transfer portal, okay. 
the car dealership man or whoever, whatever booster don't have to go get them nice little holy hugs anymore with whatever or leave a bag at the door. All right. The, the car dealer, okay, we've got X five star recruit in town this week. Yeah, I want to see him. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what the coach doing anymore. Dabo, I don't care what you're doing. My, go on off, do whatever you want to do. Want to buy a car? Fine. I don't care. I want to see the five-star linebacker y'all bringing yeah. in. Yep. Because he's the one that matters now. Yeah. He's the one he's the one that's mattered. And not and, and it's sad, and it's kind of bad to say now, but it's true. He's the one that matters now when he he was the one making the money. Or all him the, and his time. Yeah, or him and his teammates were the one, him and her, you know, his or her teammates were making money all along. Yeah. So, you know, that's where we are with that. Yeah, no, I, I totally see your your perspective. I think it's it's an interesting perspective, too, because you've, you know, you've obviously seen that side of the business and are more connected to these players than I think a lot of people are. You know, I think it's really easy for a lot of us to just kind of sit back and, and have an opinion. But um you know, you've you've seen some of these players go through this process. So definitely interesting to get your perspective. I, I do want to ask this question. Um, do you think, though, this is good for the athletes' mental health? We always talk about, you know, providing a good structure for their mental health and that kind of thing. Are we putting too much on their plate with all the deals and all the money so soon in their age and development as a player? We we don't if you're on if you on if you get on Twitter on Beyonce's internet and start using your Twitter yeah. fingers, you would think we're either on one side or the other, but we do live in a world where two things can be right. Yeah. The financial opportunities that are there for those who have the talent to achieve it, it belongs to them. Fine. Mm-hmm. But with that said. There are some black holes, some deep dark holes you can get down yeah. with that. So you do have to balance the two. Yes, you deserve it. You're putting your body on the line for this. With understand with the understanding now that said school, said academy, whatever should also have some people there to help you mm-hmm. along the way. And then you as the athlete should care about yourself first and foremost. Yeah. To take advantage of whatever uh, auxiliary services are there to keep this in order. So use your resources is what you're saying. Right. Uh-huh. right. Yeah. I'm, like yeah, I said, no, um, like Go I ahead, said, it, it, you know, two things can be right. Um, yeah. Yes, you deserve, if you're putting out that much, yes, you deserve this. But also use your resources because the pitfalls are there. We've seen them. Yeah, me and me and Jennifer Capriati got the exact same birthday to the almost to the hour. We've seen the pitfalls. They're there. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely like you said. The pitfalls are definitely there. It's it, it's such an interesting landscape because it's all happened so quickly and it's evolving so quickly. Um, and so I I think. So many people are like, this is a great thing. I do think, you know, they deserve the money, whatever. But I I do think that's something that's not talked about as much um, and shed light on as much. So that's why I wanted to pick your brain about it. No, that's no that's no problem. And I think the thing with that, the NCAA did this to themselves. When you talk about the speed that this is happening at. Oh, absolutely. You did this to yourself. You had a yep. chance 20 years ago to at least get it, get in and manage it then or manipulate it then, however, whatever you yeah. feel like. But you said no. Sure. You said no and let it and it rode for 20 years, you know. And the thing about it was the opening up the, up the, the transfer portal right along with it. Yeah, that you know. Yeah, no, it definitely exploded things. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think it's it's exploded to a whole different world, and I I think as fans we're reacting like, 
what just happened, you know, like, but like you said, it's been coming. We just kind of all happen at once, Mm -hmm. not by mistake, but kind of by mistake, I guess, because they didn't make the right moves beforehand. So exactly. And I think what the, the, the other thing behind it is that the realignment cycle started yeah. along the same time that this all started. Okay, so you got the transfer portal opened up. You get NIL, then right back behind it, bang, Texas and o- Texas and Oklahoma jump ship. Yep. Okay, we're done with this. We're done with the Big 12. So you've got uh, chaos from a infrastructure perspective because you don't know who you're going to play anymore or you don't know which conference you're going to play in and then the musical chairs because of the TV contracts have yeah. started. Mm-hmm. And it just kept going. And then, oh, by the way, I can go wherever I want to now. At least one, I can make a move at least one time and I can get paid. This yeah. all kind of came together at once. Yeah, the unsurety the unsureness i guess is Mm -hmm. extremely high like yeah i mean i know we're talking a lot about the athletes right now but like i couldn't imagine being a college football coach in this atmosphere right now because everything's happening all at once from year to year i mean think about like how many kids are gonna get in a transfer portal and go somewhere else and how many kids are gonna get in a transfer portal and come here then you've got kids that you got to worry about who you know, are on this deal and that deal. And I mean, like you said, like obviously re- use your resources, you know, you'd hope they would use their resources as an mm-hmm. athlete, but that's not always the case. So it, it's an, it's, it's an interesting atmosphere that we live in today for sports, especially if you were a coach. Yeah, for, well, from the coaching perspective, all control has been taken. Well, I won't say all control, but a large portion of what you controlled before by just yelling and screaming, you know, yeah. or kicking somebody off the program or threatening somebody, he's gone. gone now. Yeah. Okay. I'll Nick just go somewhere Sa- else. Yeah. Nick Saban can't stack up four and five star quarterbacks anymore. You yeah. can still do it, but best believe by year two, two of them are going to be gone. Yeah. And, you know, if you're a program like Alabama, somebody's probably either graduated or gone to the league. Two more of them are in the portal, so now you're back stuck with two guys, and it may not be the two guys you want to be stuck with. So now you got to get back in there and go through this process all over again. Yep. To restock, if you will, or reload, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and it's also one of those things where, like, if you're not playing for the Alabamas, you know, if you recruited somebody and they're like, oh, we just want to redshirt you, and, you know, two two years down the line that you're still not playing. Mm-hmm. it's all about tape go somewhere else go get your tape somewhere else if you want to go to the nfl like i'll go play somewhere else and i'll get my tape and be able to get scouted much better than sitting on the bench and playing for one year for alabama yeah. which is how it used to be you know that's how it used to be so yeah um you know it's the give and take of the microwave world we live in now yeah where you know some of it yeah it, it's deserve it and well deserve it. Some of it too. Hey, you know, you might want to slow down. Yep. Absolutely. So let's go into why sports agent having a sports agent is important. So I'm gonna take this from a different angle. Okay. Um and I'll tell you this. Uh so if you see my website, you see some of my taglines on Twitter or Instagram, I'll have hashtag a seat at the table. Yep. Um, As I was retiring from the military, they've got a a program that you can do as a part of your process, you know, to help you uh, get out on a good foot and be prepared for the world that's out there. It's called the ACP, I believe it's Army Corporate Program. Uh, there was a gentleman, no one did sports. They didn't have anybody. But I did get to speak and work with a gentleman that did sales at WTA, WATU or WTAU down there in Portland, Channel 2. Yeah. 
I just yeah. moved here, so I don't know the channels too oh, well. Okay. To be honest. How long <laughs> you been there? Ah, gosh, probably six ish months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this was 2017. Um, and I was talking to him, and you know, he was talking about selling yourself and you know, you know, the different realms, worlds and rooms and things of that nature. He got the opportunity to be in. And I told him, and I, I said, man, I just I just don't want to be that guy. I just don't want to be the greasy, swarmy guy. And he says to me, Adam, always grant yourself a seat at the table. And that is stuck with me. Um, and so from my perspective, I took that and said, okay, yeah, I'm not going to be that guy. I've got a, a job. I'm building a job to do. Um, and this is very prevalent in soccer where the agent sometimes becomes bigger than the player or the presence yeah. or the or the agent is bigger than the clients that he's got, the issue he's got. Um, and I looked at that and I said, I'm not going to be that. And this goes into your question. I believe I'm a support asset to you, the client. Yeah. I believe I'm important because I'm an asset to you. I'm a support asset to you. When you look at an athlete, especially now, and this is why I spoke about, uh, you know, the folks that were around and attached to Jordan throughout all of, you know, the last dance. You, let's, you've got a trainer, cook, uh, maybe secure, depending on who you are, security, um, mom and dad got to be taken care of, baby brother, sister, whatever has got to be taken care of. You got a finance guy. You got all these different, me. If you yeah. so choose all these different people around you. So what does that tell you? That tells you, and, and I hate to put it in this term, but you're the asset. Mm -hmm. So everybody else around you, if they're going to be around you, has to be some, has to either be protecting you, giving you peace and solace, or be a support asset. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a support asset. Now, we can talk all we want to about the different things we do, whether it's the trainer, you know, mom and dad being being there for them and all that other stuff. But ain't nobody getting money unless the client is on the court, on the pitch, on the field, wherever, sane, healthy, and focused. Nobody's getting anything. Not the athlete, not the agent, not nobody. Nobody's getting money. I like this. It's cool. I learned a lot of different stuff, but I'm trying to get a couple of nickels, too. Yeah. Just, just to be honest, I'm trying to get a couple of nickels too. Nobody can do that, or it's eventually going to fall if the athlete is not, first and foremost, stable personally. The second part of that is being stable with your inner circle around you. That's family, uh, whatever staff you got around you, me or whatever agent you choose, the finance guy. So that's where I believe the, most of the import, the importance is. It's in support. You know, I was just uh, texting with one of my guys um, about a situation. And, you know, if I'm not texting him back, somebody else will. Yeah. And is that person texting him back got his best interests? Probably not. Do I have his best interests? Probably, well, yes. You would hope I got your best if I'm <laughs> yeah. here, you would hope I got your best interests involved. Yeah. So I believe, so the support, being a support asset is what I believe is the importance of the agency first and foremost, because they can also go out, get your marketing deal, you know, a shoe deal, a branded deal, whatever. But they're also there as a support asset. Hey, if I've got financial questions, okay. Do I have somebody within the agency that I can call on to help it? Or do we need to go outside and find somebody? Hey, all right, here, I've got five different guys. We'll do Zoom calls with them or whatever it is you want. Figure out who you're most comfortable with and we'll go from there. Yeah. Or from that, hey, I'm moving to a new town. Okay. Well, first thing you need is, okay, a roof over your head. If you're yeah. in, if, you know, it may be, you know, if you're not that, if you're not in that comfortable of a situation, you're a seventh round draft pick, you're a rookie or whatever. Hey, you might want to stay in a hotel for a little while. 
if you're in that situation. But if you're in a much more stable situation, well, you d truly need to answer, okay, well, where am I going to live at? Okay. Let's look at this. Let's look at the real estate agents locally in that local area. All right. Well, let's look at the apartments in that local area. Can we call somebody in that local area to help us out? So doing all the dirty work, just right? Everything, um, all, every, all the everyday life, taking care yeah. of, you know, all the all the little things that, you know, some people wouldn't think about, um, right? A sports agent doing that. I think that's cool, and I think a lot of people don't see that side of sports agent. I think right. a lot of times, you know, they think it's just all about, oh, hey, I got you an endorsement deal, right? You know, or hey, I represented you. Uh, you got a media date or, you know, conference or whatever. So I think it's, it's cool to hear you talk about, you know, you know, we gotta, we gotta look at, you know, where he's living, where, he, what, what he's, his plans are during this. So I think it's cool to see that side of it. And so, so and, and part of that also is, is the, it, it continues the relationship building. So if we've done all the right things, there's a career after sports. So he's calling you back on, okay. You know, how do we do this? Or who should I talk to by doing this? Yep. Nope. That's a great point. Definitely a great point. I mean, think about how many athletes nowadays are successful way gone long after they're done with sports. Yep, I, mean, exactly. Manning. I mean, just everyone, you could insert pretty much anyone. And now they're doing, you know, sports broadcasting or doing commercials still or, you know, they can you can definitely still be relevant after your sports sports world is over. So it's a good point. All right. Who is your goat of sports agents? See, I, I saw that and I'm like, you know, is there really one? Really? I mean, because you have to look, yeah, you have to look at them because there's different because of the sports. Okay, you, and well, you've got to look at the situation. Okay, there's an international, especially like Europe or whatever, where it's more of a free for all. They're starting to corral the game of soccer a little bit with the agents, yeah. um, which is yeah. good and bad. But um, they're starting to corral that. But that's a little bit more of a free for all mm -hmm. here because of uh, revenue sharing and all of those different things. You've also got much more structured contracts. Okay, yeah. if I'm a first round pick, I already know basically what I'm gonna get paid, what which you're getting paid. So um you're negotiating extras now. So that's you know, so it, it's it's nuanced, so it's very hard to say um that there's one person. Um yeah. so I would challenge you to look at Lee Steinberg, um, Tori Dandy. Um, here's one uh rest his soul, Eugene Parker. He was Dion's original agent. Okay. Obviously, um, David Falk being Jordan's agent. Um, you look at what Rich Paul is doing right now. That was, that was the guy I was gonna bring up to um, you. That is uh that in itself, the entire construct that LeBron has built in itself is 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 amazing. Um, there's a young lady here in the States in women's soccer, Maggie Intim. She's doing a wonderful job. Penny Zahav, he does. He's a soccer agent in Europe. He's Robert uh, Lewandowski. If you follow Barcelona or have followed um, European soccer over the last ten years, that's his agent. Rafaela Pimenta, uh, she's uh, got a number of different guys, a number of different clients in European soccer. So you know, there's just a few. Yeah. Just a few, right? No, I'm just yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it's, it's interesting because, like you said, I it definitely it's a it's a constructed world. So it's I think the one that shouts out to me lately is Rich Paul, and I mean we hear about him all the time, but like him getting the contract that like Fred Van Vliet was able to get, as well as I think he also has um, Brooks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So seeing that was quite crazy to me because especially the brooks one because like dylan brooks i don't know why i couldn't think of his first name dylan brooks to me was crazy because i mean he went through all the controversy in the media and was able to still get a bag so i was like 
he's got a good ass agent over there. <laughs> so well, part, um, part of that too, obviously, Rich Dip does his part, but he does something on the court. Oh, absolutely. I'm not. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like for him to do that convincing because the media does have narratives it's, yeah, sometimes. It's yeah. Nice. So it's it's hard to beat that narrative sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes too, folks in the room know more than the media. Yeah. Because, you know, you know yeah, we can go I off can. and do a show right now and yell and scream whatever we want to and be wrong as two left feet. Yeah, and, be, and not even be close to whatever uh, center mass is, if you will. Yep. Yep. All right. So, what is your favorite story of an athlete you've represented? Um. So I really don't have. I have a. Fa- I have a couple favorite experiences. I, I um. Because I, I saw that. Um. One was going to the combine in 2018. For which sport? NFL. So this is Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, Lamar, say I think Saquon. Yeah. I forget which twin it was, Shaquille or Shaquille Griffin. Both yep. of them ended up playing for the Seahawks. He has the bench press. He does the bench yep. press there, runs the 4-3. Pete Carroll's up in this. In the booth, like, you know, yeah. Um, so I was, I was actually in Lucas Oil Stadium. If you go back to that comp, that uh, that combine, you'll see the story of Josh Allen launching this ball about eighty yards in the air. I was in there when that happened. I was in a conference when the story about Lamar not having an agent dropped. And you see all eight, all the you know the major players yeah. stream down to where he's training at or warming up at to do uh, to do the throwing part because he didn't do the drills. So yeah, that that obviously uh, that was crazy. That yeah. Was, uh, that do you was, have a favorite football team? Oh yeah, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers. How are you feeling about them right now? We got to calm the noise down. <laughs> yeah. Um for as much as I love Brad Shaw, him on television I could do with I could do without. But Sunday he said about he gave about the most the smartest synopsis of what we need to do. He says, Kenny's your quarterback, everybody settle down, go off and hire a creative offensive coordinator and draft another alignment in the first round and you're fine interesting so you like Kenny oh and this is just me so you know pay you with a grain of salt but he was seven and two at the end of last year Mm -hmm. you can talk about the schedule whatever you want to fine yeah I feel about that fine um but if he had started the season because over 17 games, he got to a record of 10 and 7. Mm-hmm. So take that over a full season, 10 and 7 would have got us in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Now, I know a whole lot of that comes through fourth quarter Kenny, Kenneth Shane, two mittens picket. <laughs> yeah. But it was there. The biggest problem I see with picket right now is if you pay attention, every time he shows growth, or every time we've made a change or, or you know locked down something offensively, he's gotten hurt. Yeah. So not being able to stay healthy. Right. Right now is the, I think him not being able to stay healthy is his biggest problem because you can't how can you really gauge him? You know, yeah. whatever you feel about Matt Canada's offense, I'm not I wouldn't a fan. <laughs> Okay. There was I. <laughs> okay, so they fired him. You're still stuck with the playbook. You can't yeah. get rid of that playbook till 2024. So where is a serious evaluation of him? Okay. We um one of the things with him though, I will say, is that people don't talk about, but there's times where he seems hyperactive. Go back to San Francisco. 
you could see he was just too hyped. Too yeah. yeah. Too too, too much going up. on in the head, yeah. Yeah, too jacked up to play. And if you look at it when he's like that, that's when the feet get out of out of whack. Uh you know, doesn't throw from a good base and he's jittery in the pocket, doing that spin out of the pocket too often instead of staying in standing in there and you know making a throw because he can do that. He can say one of the things when that I was worried about as far as taking a quarterback for us after Roethlisberger retired, especially with the off with the state of where the offensive line was then, was can the quarterback take a shot and throw yeah. and still throw throw bullets. So he I he can do that. I just think it's going to take time. If he works out, he'll be Eli Manning. If it doesn't work out, he'll be Eli. Won't may not ever be the superstar, but he'll show up when you need him to. And you know, you can see that's in him. He you might not get nothing out of him for three quarters, but if you're in the game, don't give him the ball because he will get you. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, um, I will let you have the floor to plug where people can find you um, and that kind of thing. But I really appreciate you coming on. Um, if you don't have anything else, go ahead and plug. Um, Adam Spencer, Spencer Group International. I'm here. Love to talk with you. Um, all you got to do is on your Twitter, your Instagram. Type in Spencer Group International, the company will pop up. Um, truly appreciate this time on your platform, and uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for coming on, and I really enjoyed listening and hearing your perspective. So thank you for coming on. No problem. Enjoyed it.